Hello friends, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to TBR Cluedo! It is time for July's TBR Cluedo. Are we terrified? Yes we are. <laughs> I've actually got some of my most exciting vlogs yet, hopefully coming in July if my life <laughs> repairs a little bit. But yeah, it's time for July's TBR Cluedo. This is my TBR game. If you don't know, it's themed off of Super Cluedo or Clue if you're American. And we're gonna play it and each room is a genre and there's prompts and we read a book that is that genre and that prompt. Like I said, I'm very, very excited for my July reading. I think we've got some great books coming. I will say, obviously I've done the roles. I do the roles before I do the... <laughs> Telling you what they are. There's two books that I don't currently own yet that are on this TBR So we're just gonna have to deal with pictures. Hopefully that's okay It's just because the prompts they fit the prompts whereas all the other books I got planned for the month that <laughs> I do physically own didn't fit the prompts So it was just so that something I was reading actually already reading would fit the prompt But shall we just get into it? I have nothing to say. It's summer. I love reading in the summer I love reading out in the garden. I think it's such a great vibe So I'm really hoping July is gonna be a great month for me personally <laughs> professionally because June was a little bit rough behind the scenes as you guys know. It's been the worst week of my life actually. Oh I'm so sorry. Problem. So I'm sending positive vibes into July so shall we just get into our first role. Okay role number one person number six which is yellow over in Thriller. Oh bloody hell let's see how many we roll. We've got a six or a six. We've got a double so we could go somewhere else. I'm debating whether I chance it with fantasy or not. Because I've got a lot of fantasy to read. Because I can use the stairs, which I never use. I never use the stairs. <laughs> Okie dokie, let's go. One, two, three, four, five, six. Because if you use stairs, you have to use another roll. Seven, we're in fantasy. I've got like 12 more. <laughs> um, eight, nine. Um, what can I get to? Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Oh, I can roll again because it's a double. So let's just go there. I don't know if I could get to any of them with what I had left. So we roll again. We've got a four and a three. So I will just go one, two, three. That is number 23, which is a book rated four point something on Goodreads. Roll number one was a fantasy that is rated four point something on Goodreads. And we're on to our first one that I don't own yet. Cause I literally just found out I'm reading it. And I am going to be reading The Three Body Problem by Sin Lu, which has a 4.09 average rating on Goodreads. This I'm very excited for. I know this is a big epic fantasy that a lot of fantasy readers love. I know it's been made into a Netflix show and it's like they're one of their biggest projects at the moment. I know the show is quite different from the book. Um, someone I was watching read the book and watched the show and like I think some characters are combined or like one character has turned into three characters in the show but I don't really know what the book is about so shall we have a little look? Oh, okay it's quite a short it's quite a short synopsis so let's read it out together. Set against the backdrop of China's cultural revolution a secret military project sends signals into space to establish contact with aliens. An alien civilization on the brink of destruction captures the signal and plans to invade Earth. Meanwhile, on Earth, different camps start forming, planning to either welcome the superior beings and help them take over the world seen as corrupt, or to fight against the invasion. Oh, exciting. Okay, I haven't read a good alien book in a while. <laughs> I don't know if that's weird to say, but I do like alien books because here's the thing, in my opinion, aliens exist. Don't know if this is controversial to say, there is life out there. It's a conspiracy theory that I'm actually interested in. You know when you hear about like, oh, there's this many, is that is it a universe? What's the, oh, solar system? There's this many solar systems with this many, you know, and this many have a planet in their orbit that's in the Goldilocks zone to support life. I'm not saying there's like beep, beep, bob, bob, like green men. I'm saying there's, there's life. There's like little insects out there on other planets. In my opinion, don't know if it's controversial to say. So I do quite like Alien. There's a, there's a, this is this is crazy, but there's like a believability to me of aliens versus some other stuff. Not that I think there's little green intelligent men necessarily. I don't know if it's like intelligent, intelligent human level life out there, but there's insects. There's little, you know, beetles or something, you know, 10,000 light years away. Yeah, I've heard so many good things about this. This is not a book I probably would have picked up on my own, but uh, this and another book, as you'll see, <laughs> are books that I have stumbled across mysteriously. But I'm excited. I'm excited to see what I think of it. And I feel like a lot of people, I think some people have given it like maybe a 3.5, but a lot of people who I've seen read it have really, really enjoyed it. So yeah, this is quite fantasy for me. You know, a lot of my fantasies like, <laughs> fantasy. 
you know what I mean? This is like fantasy. But I'm looking forward. I'm looking forward to it. Roll number two. Person number one, which is green. Oh, great. We're getting another fantasy. Let's see how many we roll. We've got a two and a four. So let's go one, two. That is number 11. What is that? That is, oh shit, a book with a plant or an animal on the cover. Okay. <laughs> Next roll was another fantasy and it was a book with plants or animals on the cover. And looking at this, it's maybe a little bit less planty than I thought, but I need to read it. So please just let me get away with it. <laughs> right, I'm gonna justify it. I've chosen A Fate Inked in Blood by Danielle L. Jensen. Because in my opinion, let's get up close and personal. That's like, it might be like stone carvings of leaves, but that's leaves and vines. That's leaves, that's like, le look, that's a leaf, that's a leaf. You know, it might be a carving of a leaf, but it's a depiction of a leaf. The rules don't apply. This is romanticy. This is romanticy. I'm reading this for another video. Where everything else in the video I'd say is like <clears throat> on par with my taste in reading. This is the one curveball. You'll see it probably midway through this month. This is a Norse mythology inspired romanticy, which does fill me with hope because I like that kind of mythology. However, then one of my patrons warned me there's like some elements of incest. And I just hate or like, you know, implied or suggested, or like, I don't know. I don't know what extent we're going here, but just why? Why, 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 why? Why, why, why? Why do we need this? I just hate it. I just hate it. I'll never get on board with it. You know, Cassandra Clare going, oh, pee hee, maybe, you know what I mean? Or like, I feel like it happens like, isn't there basically in Star Wars? I haven't watched Star Wars in so long, but like, don't, aren't they brother and sister or think they're brother and sister? I can't remember. Leia and one of them. <laughs> I just don't, I just, I want to unsubscribe from this narrative. <laughs> I, I might exit this yeah. conversation Why? now. No, I want to have it. Yeah. yeah, I'll see y'all later. Also, apologies for getting a plane, my window's open, because it's boiling. You might be asking Megan, why are you wearing a long sleeve? This is still summer coded to me. Also, I just want to talk about how I've been outside a lot and my face has been tanning a lot. So I've had to start darkening, using like bronzy drops to darken my foundation because when I put my normal foundation on, I look like a ghost. However, I'm wearing clothes often when I'm outside, but well, always. <laughs> I don't go outside and tan intentionally. So like my chest has not tanned at all. I feel like I'm looking insane, but like there's no, what's the balance here? Like I put my own foundation on and then my face looks like a ghost. It looks wrong, but then I darken it and my face I feel like looks too dark for my chest. Anyways, 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 anyways. So yeah, I'm nervous about this one. I'm nervous. If you've read it, please let me know if you think I'll enjoy it. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I haven't really tiptoed into romanticy. Like the only romanticy I've read is like fourth wing and what else have i read that you'd call romanticy maybe emily wilde's encyclopedia for fairies i'm feeling a little bit nervous i'm feeling a little bit nervous we shall see how it goes okay rule number three person number three which is red over in historical let's see how many we roll we've got a four and a five i am gonna go one two three four five that is number 25 which is, oh, a book I've hauled recently. Roll number three was a historical that I have hauled recently. I think this is maybe my most recent historical haul, or definitely like in the most recent five at the very least. And it is The Women by Kristen Hanna. I'm really excited to read this. So Kristen Hanna is the author of The Nightingale. I mean, she's written like 10,000 books. Like, look at that list. That's like a list of her books. Absolutely diabolical, absolutely insane. Could you do everything that I do in a day? But I've heard really good things about this and it's basically following women in the Vietnam War and the story, the story of one woman who goes to war but it shines light on the story of all women who put themselves in harm's way to help others. It's a profoundly emotional Rick D. John story into a memorable heroine whose extraordinary idealism and courage under fire defines an era. Okay, okay. <laughs> I really enjoyed The Nightingale. I gave it a four star, but I did feel like Kristen Hanna was forcing me to cry. You know, you read some books where you feel like it's really, really earned, and then you read some books where you feel like you were just like getting off on making me cry a little bit. <laughs> That's how I felt about The Nightingale. But I've heard such good things about this. I'm really interested in reading more from her. And then maybe I'll read, I think she came up with The Great Alone and something about wins, The Four Winds. I don't know, something like that, uh, recently. So maybe I'll go read some of those as well if I enjoy this one. But I've heard really good things about it and something about it 
I don't know if this synopsis intrigued me more than her other ones. I just felt like I was ready to pick up another Kristen Haller and give it a go, you know? And the Vietnam War isn't something I've read a ton about. I'm not really interested in reading like World War II books, you know? I just don't, it's overdone, babes, it's overdone. Whereas this is a period I haven't necessarily read a lot about. And I feel like you hear a lot about it in American history, the kind of attitudes to the Vietnam War, but it's not something that we as Brits necessarily know a ton about. I feel like it's not something we touch on at school a lot. So yes, I'm looking forward to seeing what I think of this one. Okay, one number four. Person number one again. <laughs> okay, I'll take it. Uh, let's see how we roll. Oh my gosh. Okay, wait. We've got a five and a six. The six has rolled so far off the board. <laughs> we've got a five and a six. Okay, what can we get to with that? I feel like that's so many, that, but not enough to go anywhere else. I'm just going to end up going around in circles. <laughs> so let's see. Um, let's go one, two, three four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. <laughs> that is number four. What is number four? Oh, a standalone book. Okay, easy peasy. Next was a fantasy that's a standalone and on my T-Bell Cluedo board there's no sci-fi room so I allow myself to take sci-fi under fantasy. I guess the three-body problem is kind of sci-fi-y as well. But we are going with one I'm so excited to read and it is The Ministry of Time by Kaylian Bradley. It's a time traveling romance or something. It's a debut novel. Oh, okay. We got a little, we got a little, little synopsis here. A boy meets a girl. The past meets the future. A finger meets a trigger. The beginning meets the end. England is forever. England must fall. My goodness. I think it's about someone working as a civil servant in a government job and it's offered to test out time travel, which I find very intriguing. I love anything that's set in like government. I think that's such a great idea. I actually, I was going to tell you like a great idea for a murder mystery I have, but I'm not going to tell you because I may write it one day. <laughs> but I just think like British government, Oh, maybe it's because I'm interested in politics, but I think it's such a great setting. This might be something that Tom would enjoy. So the civil servant's role is to work as a bridge, living with, assisting and monitoring the expat known as 1847 Commander Graham Corr. As far as history is concerned, he died on Sir John Franklin's doomed expedition to the Arctic. Oh, this is so exciting. I've heard wonderful things about it. I am so looking forward to it. Also, it seems like fairly short. Oh, I think this is gonna be so good. Please let me know if you've read this. I think this has been one of the biggest releases in the UK so far this year, but I'm not sure how it's done, you know, in the US and stuff. But I just think, oh, I love the cover. I'm so vibing with it. I'm just vibing. The only thing you can mend is the future. Oh, it's so vibey. <laughs> But yeah, let me know what you think of this one. I'm really, really looking forward to picking it up and seeing what I think. Okay, we are almost there, everyone. Let's see how many roll. Person number five, which is white over in nonfiction. Let's see how many roll. We've got two or three. Let's just go one, two. That is number seven, which is a book with under 6,000 ratings on Goodreads. Roll number five was a nonfiction with under 6,000 ratings on Goodreads, and I'm reading a curveball here. This is another one. <laughs> Let's get into it talking about it. So I'm going to be reading The Purpose Guided Universe, I think it's called, which basically is like a philosophy book arguing for there being a higher power, a higher intelligence that created the universe, but through science. So looking at scientific reasons that a higher being must exist rather than religious reasons. And you may be thinking, Megan, what the fuck? <laughs> it's getting weird. That does not sound, that does not sound like something. What's going on with my hair? Okay. Um, that doesn't sound like something you can read and you'd be correct. However, right, I am, this isn't out of my own volition. I'm reading this for a reason and I've been made, well, made to read it isn't the right word, but you know, there's a reason, there's a video, <laughs> it's coming. But I did do religious studies at A-level, which if you're not from the UK, A-level is when you're 17, 18, so the two years before university. And I did religious studies, which make, you know, it sounds like I'm, you know, studying Catholicism or Christianity, but only one third of it was development in Christian thought. And then the other two thirds were philosophy and ethics. So I've read a lot of this kind of stuff when I studied that, you know, like different voices within philosophy or the idea of the universe, or the way humans should act, and all this stuff. So I read a lot of this kind of stuff at that time, so it feels a little bit like a throwback. I feel like I'm in the summer before sixth form, like reading books, trying to like prepare <laughs> 
for studying, which is something I did. I can't believe I pre-read books for six form. That's absolutely crazy. Anyways, so I'm intrigued about it. Listen, do I think it's going to change my worldview? I don't know. Probably not. But I think it's interesting to read this kind of stuff and learn and hear from other voices. And I do feel like I've got a bit of a, you know, a basis in the topic, like a base level of understanding. Like I feel like this isn't without of my wheelhouse to read. So this will be interesting. <laughs> But it doesn't have any ratings. I think it has like a hundred ratings on Goodreads. So yeah, we shall see. We shall see what I think of it. And then a final roll, roll number six. We've got person number three, which is red, a bit historical. Let's see how many roll. Oh, we've got a double again. We've got six and a six. Okay, I'm feeling like a thriller maybe. So let's use the doors again. Oh my god, we've used the we've used the stairs twice when we haven't used them in in years okay so let's go one two three four five six seven where do i want to go <laughs> eight nine ten no that hasn't worked where did i get to ah wait one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve there we go that is number 13, and that is a gifted book. Okay, interesting. And then our final roll was a thriller that was gifted to me, and this is the one I gave to my patrons to vote on. So they vote on one round every month, and that ends up being our book club pick. So not only are they voting on something they want me to read, they're voting on what they want to read. And I picked four books that were gifted to me or sent to me. Basically, with TBR Cluedo, I allow myself to include books that were sent to me by publisher, or like a book box that I didn't pay for or whatever. Anything like that I allowed to fall under this category because I don't have like a publisher sent. So it's all included in this prompt. And the options that I gave them were What Lies in the Woods by Kate Alice Marshall, Midnight is the Darkest Hour by Ashley Winstead, Night Watching by Tracy Sierra, and Stay Awake by Megan Golding. And we had a lot of comments, people excited about this selection and trying to choose what to vote for. And let me tell you, it is maybe, I haven't gone back and checked, but I feel like it is the closest <laughs> poll we've ever had because there was one vote between these two. One vote. One vote between these two books, between Night Watching and What Lies in the Woods. And I can tell you that the winner is What Lies in the Woods by Kate Alice Marshall. I am surprised, I thought Night Watching would win, but Kate Alice Marshall won. So this is about four friends who, when they were younger, went into the woods and one of them was stabbed attacked by this man and she survived and she identified her attacker and he was then identified as a serial killer having killed six women and yada yada and you think okay open shut case turns out these girlies lied I don't think this is the man who did it why did they lie what's happening what's the truth is all what we're trying to uncover and I'm intrigued I don't, have I read an adult Kate Alice Marshall yet I've read Rules for Vanishing but that was YA no so I've only read Rules for Vanishing by Kate Alice Marshall which I enjoyed but I felt like I would have enjoyed it more if it was adult so I'm really excited to pick this up. This is our book club pick if you want to come join us over on the Patreon. We're having so much fun over there. It's the most amazing community. There's lots of fun stuff happening on the Discord. So yeah, I'll leave a link down below if you want to join the Patreon. But I'm really excited to read What Lies in the Woods with everyone. And I feel like we all need like a quick fast paced thriller. I think this is a great pick for the month. So there we have it. That is our July TBR. Please let me know what you thought of any of these books. I would love to know your thoughts on any of these. Which one are you most excited for me to read? Out of the list, I'm probably most excited to read The Ministry of Time. Something about it is just calling to me. <laughs> but thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you very soon in another video. Bye!